and all its species, it's no wonder that mankind has always been drawn to the Chesapeake Bay. And while much has changed over time in western shore cities such as Baltimore, the eastern shoreline is known for what hasn't. A place where fishing, family, and faith define a way of life that survives in this isolated corner of America. Just north of Maryland's border with Virginia is Smith Island, a marshland 12 miles into the Chesapeake Bay. Despite being on the doorstep of major U.S. cities, it's so secluded that the Army had to step in during a deep freeze back in 1939. The weather this morning isn't nearly as extreme, but the wind is howling at dawn as I take off on my mission to find the best bluegrass in the Chesapeake Bay. There's a crabbing family that's been living on Smith Island since the 17th century. And to meet them, I have to trade my bike for a boat. It's going to be a very interesting ride over. A boisterous bay is making sure of that. And while there's no chance of catching any shut-eye, we are catching plenty of waves. The 45-minute journey feels more like 45 hours, and I'm thinking the Smith Islanders must be a pretty hardy bunch. All good! <laughs> With no other link to land, residents routinely tough it out on the Chesapeake to run everyday errands. The reward for such troubles? Tranquility. But for now, there's only enough time for a quick slice of island life for meeting Crabber, Dwight Marshall. I put them all back. Or did I? That's all right. I can just suck it in back. As soon as I get on, I'm off. So there's no break for me. Because Dwight, Crabber for almost 50 years, has work to do. Crabs thrive in this, around this marsh area. They go all in these little guts and stuff, and they thrive on the aquatic vegetation and stuff in there. And this, this is basically a prime place for producing crabs. It doesn't hurt that the average depth of the Chesapeake Bay is 21 feet, and that its mostly muddy bottom is an ideal surface for bluegrass to congregate. Even at 66, Dwight pulls up hundreds of pots six days a week, and there's no doubt that Marshall knows his crabs inside and out. They're all male crabs. All males. He's got the Washington Monument. The Washington Monument. Okay. <laughs> all the females feature the dome of the cabin. Dwight knows exactly where to heave up a healthy haul of crabs, which isn't always possible. Back in 2008, emergency management measures were brought in to help the population recover from overfishing and habitat loss. Today, local crab stocks are back with a vengeance at their highest level in nearly 15 years. Look at that. Look at that grip. You won't let go. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Hey! an occupational hazard well worth it. Check the hand real quick. For a catch widely considered to contain the best blue crabs in the business. Right through the glove. The food that they eat here and the right salinity of the water, uh, the pollution is at a minimum here. Right. Makes the crabs taste better. Absolutely. A lot, a lot of people all over the state would rather have crab meat that comes from this area mm -hmm. than any other part of the state mm -hmm. or the world that they go. Crab quality doesn't guarantee a decent living. In some cases, watermen are getting 1970s prices for their catch. That, combined with higher maintenance, fuel costs, means that the future of crabbing, one of the only ways to make a living on Smith Island, is under threat. Still, Dwight would never consider abandoning his deep roots in the area. You like, you like living on the island? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you know, you wouldn't stay here if you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's entertaining in some kind, but sometimes it's the way you get on the main line and get in that, that uh, traffic jam and, and stuff and you get over here and get in the water and come over where it's quiet and peaceful and water. You say, oh. Yeah. For more information on blue crabs from the Chesapeake, go to cookingchannelTV.com slash HLD. Coming up, with the crabs in the can, I get cracking. 
After a busy morning of crabbing on the Chesapeake Bay, I'm finally back on land at tiny Tylerton, Smith Island. Population, 58. Even in its heyday, only 900 or so people call this eroding island home. And at some point, it may no longer be habitable. For now, its crabbing tradition continues. And I'm taking my haul for a pressured steam at 230 degrees, making them easier to pick. Good thing, because the Smith Island Ladies Crab Meat Co-op is my next stop. I'm here at a picking station, and I'm learning how to pick a blue crab. Put your knife under the All right. shell. Under the shell, yeah. Shell off. Oh boy, you made that look easy. <laughs> For generations, wives such as Tina Corbin and Robin Bradshaw processed their husband's catch from their homes. Until Maryland banned the practice in 1993, leading to the creation of the co-op. Is that allowed? What I just did? Yeah. Oh, good. Can if you want. The ladies pick anywhere from 70 to 360 crabs a day. Ow. Who's the fastest? She's the fastest. She, she knows it. She knows it. She makes eyes going, but she does. This isn't about speed. See, we are right. about getting it right once. You've done the wrong thing. Take the claws off first. Right. I'm learning. With economic pressures making it difficult for some watermen to make a living, the co-op's future is in doubt. If there's no watermen, there are no crabs to pick. So it's a hard way of life, what we do. It's, uh, it's not easy. Um, I, I love being here. I've, I've loved being born and raised on Smith Island. I love the fact that I have been able to raise my daughter here and be married here and be able to work. And I've been thankful every day for this building and being able to do it. But I can see part of my heart breaks knowing that for the young people here, it's not much, it's not much of a future. With their way of life in danger, I feel privileged to share in their craft. He's doing pretty good. He's 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 speeded up right good. Right. <laughs> but I won't want to eat his meat. <laughs> when it like a river, I dance with the way. After leaving the ladies, I'm off to help make lunch with Dwight's wife, Mary Ada Marshall, who celebrated crab cakes for our regular stream of foodies to the island. safe and sound well thank you for opening your door to me literally uh let's let's make some crab cakes oh it'd be my pleasure mary ada's been crafting cakes from her husband's catch for 30 years but don't ask her for a recipe i can't tell you everything that i put in them but it's a basic little spicy recipe All right, so i'm gonna warn you I'm gonna before, make... before you do anything i want everyone to understand you're not gonna divulge very many no. secrets here so Pay attention right now. It's going to go fast. Everybody at home, because you're not going to hear measurements. You're not going to get not right. specific ingredients. I, so you better just keep your eyes peeled. My children don't even know the amount of what I put in. Okay. So we're going to go with some eggs. And I, by the way, picked at least one of these. Can I taste it just make sure? Sure. Okay. You washed your hands, mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to put in some mayo. You don't go light on your mayo there, do you? I'm not telling you nothing. Hmm. And we're going to put and in you didn't tell us how many eggs? You wouldn't know that. Look, she, she, she poured away from us, so we couldn't even tell what was in there. Actually, this is kind of funny, but I'm yep. allergic to seafood. I've never tasted it. I heard anything. this rumor. You can't taste it. I can't, but you can taste it for me. It looks like you like crab meat. I love I'll it. I'll tell you one of my secrets of our crab cakes. Yep. This, uh, our crab meat over here, picked mm -hmm. by the ladies, they use the entire crab, right. which is the claw, yep. the lump, and the regular. You know, it all goes into the one container. Sure. You know, when you buy crab meat away from here, it's, all it's separate. separate. Yep. But we use the entire crab. Sure. Her secret ingredients mixed, Mary Ada doles out some enormous cakes, many of which will be shipped around the country, while the rest are cooked up at the Drum Point Market, the island's only store, which serves as a gathering place for locals and a mecca for visiting crab cake fanatics. Going in at 3.50? Until they're golden brown. I got up at 5 in the morning to go through the entire process to get to this point right now, right here. You better open them jaws <laughs> Hey, you can't get any better than that. 
You cannot get any better than that. I'll be your taster for today, and I'll tell you, you just did a great job. Everybody seems to like them well. What makes your crab cake killer above all other crab cakes is the fact that the inside is just so soft and, like, it's warm, it's creamy, it's all crab. And the outside has that like nice little shell. Now you're making my night. Right? <laughs> She's never had them. <laughs> Every little piece of this island is in that bite. That is success in a bunk.